Nice. I'm a light heavyweight, actually, so. <laughs> He's actually like heavyweight in MMA in boxing. He's, what is the heavyweight in boxing? Yeah. Small one and not heavyweight. We're going to get him as a cruiserweight. He's a cruiserweight. The heavyweight's bigger. Heavyweight, what that is? 201 and up. 201. He's got a system of weightlifting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cruiserweight. Yeah, that's that boy. That means he hides a lot about his boxing. What's that? That means he's got a lot of boxing. Well, wow, there's different weight classes. Yeah, 17 different weight classes. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm saying there's different weight classes. There's about 7 to 10 pounds difference in the weight class. Once you guys are in tip-top shape or girls, when they're in tip-top shape, that 7 pounds is a lot, big difference. So, oh, so you got to fight somebody's head? Yeah, that's what's going around. Unless you're 201 pounds or, or, or bigger, then you fight your in whoever. So, oh, and I'll be fighting in probably 190 to 200 weight class, which is called Cruiserweight. Yeah. I, I fight whatever weight I'm at when they call me. <laughs> like me, I fight at one, my weight class is from 131 to 135. That's the weight class I fight at. And I'm heavy. I walk around heavy. What well, y'all do you like to say, Saz? Like y'all fight around heavy? No, he's actually bigger than very much. <laughs> 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 hey, you Thanks. Big, huh? No. <laughs> actually, I'm walking around like 150 right now, but I'm about 15 pounds to get out of my weight. You know, so I'm kind of great. Some guys got a lot more than Some guys got 40 pounds in this way. I don't understand how they can do it. I can remember when um, Oscar De La Hoya was fighting 130. He said he walked around 170 and he dropped 40 pounds in this way. That's unbelievable. I couldn't do that at all. So. But Antoine, he does MMA and boxing. Now, that's not how I feel. That's what not you, know, you know what he's doing? You know what he's doing? You guys don't do that to me. He's a tell the ultimate fight. Yeah, the cage fight. The cage fight. Have you ever seen like the Bay or the UFC? I don't know. 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 I, uh, <laughs> I fight, I fight, Good. I fight MMA uh, for the UFC. You want to see the reality show that was required? Yeah, you know, yeah. So, uh, basically, it's a reality show where you get a group of guys around the same weight or the same weight, and they go and they go into this house and they fight, and the winner of all the fights get a contract with the UFC. So I was on the eighth season of the Fire. Um, went into my fight, I mean, everybody's in the UFC fight, so it's like a 30 foot cage that you're locked into, and you, all you have is four ounce gloves, which is, what, what 10 ounce gloves? Eight ounce. Eight ounce gloves, so half the size of what they wear, four ounce gloves. It's pretty much just enough time to break your hand and you hit somebody. Um, a cup and a mouthpiece, and that's all you uh, get to wear. <laughs> Adversity is like misfortune. Um, 
or bad things that happen to you that's not your fault. All right? A lot of you have family issues or had problems or something even has even happened to you that wasn't your fault. And uh, just despite that, you can you can make it. All right? We got it's called obstacles. You can make it through that. And we are on our way. I mean, everyone, we have to get up every day and do the right thing still. Okay? So whatever you're going through, you get through it. Try to be successful because we, we don't want to see you guys you know, get in trouble. Because I've, uh, I've done prison time. I've done two years in prison. And uh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was terrible. All right? Everybody thinks they're a tough guy until they get in there. Right? It's not a bad place to be. And they lock women up just as fast as they do, they, they do men. So I want everybody to know they stay out of trouble. Don't do drugs. <laughs> All right, for real. Are you scared? What's that? Uh, I'm always scared. I mean, anytime you have a fight, a fight is a fight. So there's always going to be nerves that come along with that. So, and I've been doing it for I mean, five years now. And it's just yeah, I really get nervous. So it's just you kind of use that energy to focus and use it as fuel in given a situation like that. I mean, it's a little bit different. Um, if you're in a fight, say so you, so, you, know, you just fight spontaneous, it just happens. That's a little bit different because your mind doesn't have time to prepare for that. You just you just go on with whatever happens. Well, in a situation we know our fights, you know, three to four months ahead of time. So it's like four months we gotta think about, okay, this dude's gonna try to, you know, knock my head off. So I mean, it's mental preparation to come over the way. Yeah, you can ask some good questions. Yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, any, yeah. yeah. Any time you have a turn over here. You have a turn <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, I have uh, 13 wins and 9 for my knockouts. So. Dang. Yeah. That's what you said. That's what Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as on the ground at all. So you have boxers, traditional boxers? I scream at little girls and get them. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know if you addressed it, maybe I missed it, but um, I, I'm assuming you didn't grow up wanting to be a fighter. So, what what is kind of your background, and why did you? What happened that chose that made you choose to do this? And um, you got to like keep going off a little bit. Boy, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the whole story. So, um, basically, uh, I didn't really fight in high school. I, I was not, I wrestled in high school. I was. Um, I don't even remember about the South Norfolk, you might know the South Norfolk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 South Norfolk area. Um, wrestled, played football in high school. You know, I was all state in wrestling, all title in football. So uh, athletically, I was pretty successful in what I did. Um, ended up uh, going to college, getting a full, full ride, full wrestling scholarship to Old Dominion University. Um, made it in uh, marketing, commercial arts, auto cast, stuff like that. Real RC Parks and type, so um, really wanted to have that as my career sitting, you know, in front of the desk, you know, designing billboards and advertising for different companies. Um, ended up being really, really lazy in college and uh, got kicked out of school off of scholarship. I got a totally free ride to college. They had everything, everything was paid for housing, books, you know, I didn't have to find a bike for anything. And, uh, Ended up squandering that scholarship just because I was lazy. I, I mean, I had to get up early. I had to get money to pop. Yeah. So yeah, you see the little y'all faces? Yeah. And I, and I squandered that. And to the clock, you got to get up, what, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning? And I couldn't even make out of bed at 10. So um, ended up leaving school, um, joining the workforce. As this is all going on, I'm like just getting big and looking up. Um, <coughs> End up getting a pretty decent job a couple of years later at a sheetrock factory, which you can imagine 
not climate control in the summer, it's 10 degrees hotter than it is outside, in the winter it's 10 degrees colder. So, um, but that was a pretty decent job at the time. I was making 965 when I was starting, which, yeah, which I know is no money in this morning, this day and age. But, you know, for me, for a kid that, you know, didn't have a whole lot going on and losing my scholarship, I saw it was a pretty good opportunity. So, took this job at this uh, sheet rock plant, worked there for about five years, and just getting heavier and heavier and heavier. So, I stepped actually one day at work, this is kind of what's sparking right here. I stepped on um, a scale at work, and this scale is meant for big, <laughs> it's meant for big sheets of sheet rock. <laughs> you know, so, we were playing around at work, and I stepped on a scale, and it says 315. And I'm like, wow. 315, going from 315 to where I used to be at, I, I wrestled at 189 in high school, never was over 200 pounds, always athletic, always in pretty good shape, and now, you know, five, six years later, I'm on a sheetrock scale, you know, weighing 315 pounds. So I just wanted to do something to, you know, change my life. I, you know, I've always been pretty big, so I always hit the weights when I go to the gym, and it was nothing for me to go around 300 pounds on a bench press, but that wasn't really getting me where I wanted to be. So. I uh, had a friend that, that suggested I go to this uh, martial arts school, it's called Hybrid Academy or Hybrid Training Center in Virginia Beach. Um, went to this gym and I told, you know, having a wrestling background, I said, you know, I just want to get in shape, do some kickboxing classes, just, you know, try to get his weight down. Um, did it for a couple months and uh, they actually had a fight that was getting ready for another fight. And me having a wrestling background, he asked me, can I come over and help this kid out because he was fighting the wrestling. So I uh, went over and helped him out and did pretty well, actually um, did well against the kid and the coach invited me onto the fight team and uh, had five amateur fights, won all my amateur fights by knockout, first round knockout, uh, went to pro, um, first pro, quarter, pro fight, first round knockout and uh, got invited onto the ultimate fight TV show and that's pretty much it. So I was waiting for him. 315 to 200 pounds um, over the span of four years. And you know, I feel great. I mean, from the future I have now to what my future was, is it's like night and day. I mean, it's not a situation to where, you know, this is something I wanted to do in my life. I had no ambition to fight. I, I didn't fight much in high school. I was an athlete in high school. Um, and then, you know, I kind of took this drop or, you know, an unfortunate time in my life and just kind of had to be built from that, so it's you know, something that's, that's that's doable. You know, I always tell a lot of people that you gotta look at the bigger picture, you gotta see more than what's right in front of your face, and it's, sometimes it's hard to do that. You know, you gotta go through the most of the life every day, you seeing the same thing, you're going to the, the same schools, seeing the same people, and just being, you know, exposed to what's right in front of us, but you gotta realize that there's so much more out there that stuff I would, I would have never seen, you know, had I kept working in the sheetrock factory and, you know, not really using my potential to the best of my ability. You know. What's sheetrock? Sheetrock is the stuff they build houses with the white the walls. It's like your house, that's sheetrock. Um, and it's not pretty, it's not, it's not a pretty job. So. Before you join, like, the five of us, when you were in college, I wanted to be a graphic designer. I, was, uh, I went, actually went to college for graphic design. Um, but we, graphic design is a whole lot of different areas. It's uh, AutoCAD, which is what I was good at, like computer-rated drafting, going on a computer, seeing a, having a vision, going on a computer, and pretty much making it come out of the TV. That's what I did. Um, I did a lot of, uh, even before I got out of college, this is a sad thing, even before I got out of college, um, I was getting job offers. So, I mean, people were offering jobs. I mean, that's how good I was at it. People were offering jobs right beyond my first year in school, first year in CAD program. I, I was getting offered jobs in D.C., in New York, in Raleigh, in California, and, and it's going to squander it all. So. They should make a movie that too. I know they should. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Who wants to be famous in here? Are you want to tell me what you want to be famous for, but are you serious about it? You think there's any reason why you shouldn't be able to do that? Because let me tell you something, we all have stuff in life that happens to us, we have reasons.
we all have reasons, all three of us in here have reasons that we come up with. I'm not saying they're good reasons, but we have reasons to be screw up, okay? All the reasons in the world, I wish you not do the right, that we would be playing on alcohol off my mind, on my mom, my dad would need, do some beat me or something like that. I have all the reasons in the world to drink and do drugs, but no reason is good enough, okay? Don't let nothing stop. And one day we have to do is make sacrifices. Uh, we don't need to hang out. We don't need to go hang out too much. I mean, we get our chance to uh, socialize, but when we're going on training, we gotta go home and show. That's right. sacrificing lots. Of stuff. Anyway. Pete, did, you, did you tell them you graduated from here? Yes, I did graduate. I did graduate. Uh, I did graduate. You said 1992. Thank you very much. 92? 93. 93, okay. I was so, earlier on the football team. They don't know football team, and they didn't put, they don't have a picture now. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll ask you a deep question. What's the okay. worst decision you've ever made in life, and what's the best decision? you've ever made in life? All right, the worst decision, one of my biggest regrets is not doing good in school because I was a top-notch baseball player. I was expected to go to, to be a professional baseball player. I had the Yankees, uh, the Mariners, um, the Padres looking at me. I threw, I threw 90, maybe 91, but I, I threw in the 90s. And if, oh, if you throw 92 or up, you're gonna, you're gonna get signed. You might not get signed for much, but you'll get signed and you'll be shot. But I was so short. Uh, but anyway, my biggest regret was not doing good in school while I was here. You know, most of the most of the dropout kids that drop out, they they regret that. They want to go back and do it. I had time, but I did have some mentors that helped me out to get through high school. But I regret not doing good in school and playing at a good college. Because I did go to college. I went to two years of college. I went to a junior college in Carolina, then I went to North State for a year and played baseball. College is fun. I'm not some of party. I'm some of being in college. College is fun. It's an exciting experience. Something that if I didn't go to college, even though I didn't do that good when I was in there, because I didn't have good study habits in high school, I still had study habits. I want to try to learn how to start studying in college. It was too, not too late, <laughs> you know? But that's one of my biggest regrets, not listening to uh, some of my mentors then. Like, I had a coach named Tommy Townsend, who was a baseball coach here, who just passed away. God bless him, but he saved my life for the most part. I mean, he really did. Look out for me, took some extra time to prepare me, so I really appreciated that. <coughs> but I regret not doing good in school because I know I could have been, I should be retired from baseball right now. I'm relaxing in a big, big mansion somewhere. Yeah. But one of the things I'm happy, at, I'm happy about is that I got, in, I got into a sport like boxing. Uh, you guys like, you know, whatever your favorite sport is, just imagine being able to, do, to be a coach and do it for a living, and that's what I'm getting to do. I also get a couple fights here and there. To, to help add some more money to the bank account. So I'm, I'm real grateful that I got into boxing because I'm also able to help a lot of kids out for making mistakes that I made. Because I can't pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> I see it every day, all right? Now, like I said, I'm not, I'm not in here preaching to fight. I don't want anybody to be here to fight, but we're just trying to show you that you can be what you want to be, all right? There should be no reason to let anybody tell you that you can't do, be what you want to be. All right? So you like Excuse me? <coughs> I pay you play shortstop with Taylor. Um, I need shorts now. All right, sweet. Miss Miss Van Leer knows him, and you just saw your guidance counselor. Oh yeah, Miss Sweeney. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is. Yeah, she's such a. And I'm in trouble with Kelly Taylor a lot. Yeah. Do you guys um, have any more questions? Because some of the other kids want to see you guys again. They were asking about you. Awesome. Somebody saw and spread a rumor, so I wanted to take you upstairs real quick. Did you guys um, have any more questions? I don't know.